Hello and welcome back. I'm Shana Searcy. I'm so excited to paint with you today. I'm sorry if my voice sounds a little funky. I am a little bit under the weather, but we must press on. So uh, today we are going to be painting owls. Now I love owls. They hold so much symbolism in so many different cultures, religions, regions of the world um, that they are just super mystical creatures in my mind. Um, we're going to be focusing on this piece today, the barn owl, not to be confused with the barred owl. Um, both are beautiful creatures, um, but I just wanted to show you, I love to paint owls in lots of different styles and varieties. Um, so we're gonna set this one aside for today from my sketchbook, and we're gonna focus on the barn owl. So this beautiful creature here, we are going to draw it and then paint it using two colors. And this might only even look like one color to you, uh, which you could definitely do this whole piece in one color, but I'm actually gonna add a second color for a slight variation. And we'll get to that in a moment. So y'all been asking for more drawing tutorials. Now this isn't really gonna be a full tutorial on drawing, um, but I am gonna draw this piece out for you because it is very simple. Um, and I think you can definitely do it with some basic, basic instruction. So um, we're going to draw and then paint. Uh, with our barn owl, um, I'm going to start with the face and the eyes and the beak here and then the body. So there's just a couple of basic shapes that we want to focus on. All right, I'm going to put my face kind of up here. I'm going to move it a little more towards the top than this one. So I'm going to move it up a little bit. But the shape of the barn owl's face is a very soft kind of heart shape, like very tiny dip here, not a lot of point, but kind of two low, uh, lobes of. So I'm just going to start at the top. Bring it down. And you can see I'm drawing super lightly. I could draw a little bit darker just so you can see what's going on. But the first version of that is how light I generally draw when I'm sketching something out. And usually, I've said this before, I don't sketch directly on my watercolor paper. I do it on a piece of drawing paper or computer paper, and then I transfer it um, when I'm doing something that might require erasing. But I'm being brave today and I'm showing you <laughs> that I'm going to go right to my watercolor paper. So I did this very soft kind of heart shape, like very, very subtle. And then I'm just adding the top of the head here. You can see that. All right. And then I'm going to add on the eyes. Now the eyes are higher up in this um, kind of heart shape and they're wide. So almost one and a half um, lengths of each other apart and they're rounded. Now this part I usually have to erase on or a little bit if I don't get it quite right or they're just not feeling quite right to me. So they're teardrop shaped here. They're going to come to a point in the center but be rounded on the outside. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. And then the beak Just comes to a point right here at the end. We'll add the details with the paint. Uh, all right. So, and you'll notice on here with my paint, I want to create this kind of fluffy, rounded um, shape with this. This is not flat, a flat face, but you can see with the shading and shadowing, it goes outward like this. Um, you can draw a few lines on there for yourself if you need some guidelines. Or some inspiration to kind of get you feeling that fluffiness. All right. And then we're just going to go to the body. The body is going to be super simple. It's going to come like one quarter of the way up. The face here is going to be where it attaches just out a little bit and then back in. This side is going to be a little bit more rounded. And that's it. 
that's it. We're going to add all the rest of the details with the paint. Okay. Um, you could make this. I'm feeling like it's a little narrow, small, but you know what? I'm going to go with it. This is why I draw first and then <laughs> bring it to my watercolor paper. So the colors we're going to use, I'll put this up here, over here for inspiration. Um, and I'm going to just move my paint to this side because I am right-handed. And my palette is very messy. I do usually keep my palette messy, but I've been doing a lot of videos. I like to clean it off for you guys so we can start fresh. Uh, but today, my palette is very messy. Um, I'm actually going to be using this color up here in this little corner. What color is this, you ask? This is Payne's Gray, one of my favorite colors of all time. Super versatile for so many things rather than black. And then the second version I'm gonna be using is gonna be a mixture of Payne's Gray and Phthalo Blue, but we're gonna start with Payne's Gray. So I'm gonna start with, I have a size six brush here. And I'm gonna start by just outlining very lightly my face with Payne's Gray with a nice watery mixture. I'm only gonna do half the face, as you see there. And then I'm gonna take my brush, rinse it off, and just go along the edges. Some of it's gonna dry, that's okay, and might not reactivate. And I'm just going to, you can see my brush bringing in color from the edge, okay? Very subtle, very light. But I'm going in this direction that I wanted those little swooping additions that I made on there. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm trying to keep this line and it's even going to be a little broken in spots. That's fine. Water. Bring this in. It's even a little darker on this side. That's okay. All right, and we're gonna let that dry. I think that looks great. Now the other piece I'm gonna do, as long as you don't have any water touching your eyes, which I do have a tiny bit right up here in the corner, we're gonna fill in the eyes. Eyes are gonna be all Payne's Gray, a nice thick coating. But we are gonna leave, and I didn't do this on the drawing, but we're going to leave a little highlight up here, and then another one kind of this way so they're both kind of facing this way so I'm just gonna not paint in those sections and be careful along your borders if your face is still wet you could do the eyes as the very first thing so you don't even have to worry about anything drying I'm just going to change the shape of that highlight ever so slightly, give it a little curve to the bottom so it's not... All right, I'm going to turn my paper so I'm not dragging my hand through my pre-painted areas. Again, leaving a little highlight there. Beautiful. All right, already starting to look like our barn owl. All right, so let's get some of the details in the face in there. And by details, I use that lightly. So I am going to also sketch in the nose here. Or the beak. Just sketching it in, and now I'm going to Take my water, and then from here, I'm going to come outward again with my brush strokes, playing up that rounded kind of fluffiness. And each one of these will be slightly different. Um, 
you know, there isn't a perfect brush stroke pattern that you're going to achieve. And let's see. Outward and upward. And then I'm just going to add a tiny bit more. This is still wet. It's going to bleed. And I'm okay with that. But I'm adding just a tiny bit more to darken the bottom of the beak a little bit. All right. I'm going to let that dry. I can always revisit later if I need to. I'm going to water down my paint gray a lot. I'm going to re... Um, so I'm wetting my brush. Sorry, it's off camera. I'm dipping my brush in water. So my brush is fully loaded with water and then I'm picking up paint. So I'm adding water to this already watered down paint. And I'm going to blend this out on the crown of the head. There we go. Okay, now we're gonna get to the body. I'm actually gonna change, I'm gonna size up my brush. All right, I'm gonna put these over here. I'm gonna go with a size 10, 10, 12, something a little chunkier. I want really broad strokes for the sh for the um, wings. I'm gonna use this very watered down Payne's Gray again. I'm gonna start up here at the shoulder and I'm just going to bring some strokes that resemble like something of a feather, but being very loose with it down from, everything's going in a downward stroke. I'm adding water because I want this to be nice and loose. And then I'm gonna add a little bit darker color over on this shoulder. So there's a wing here and a wing here. So I don't have to, you don't have to get specific, just changing up the value a little bit just to indicate a change. All right, that is good for me. I am happy so far with this. You can go back up to the top. I'm just gonna add a little bit more detail right here, a little darker in some spots around the eyes. This one is already much darker than my first one, but that's okay. I'm just adding a little detail around the eye here, a little darker to kind of add some depth to these. Ooh, there goes the water. The joys of recording from home when everybody has a snow day. So it's a snow day here. Everybody is home and they're just waking up. All right, we're gonna let this whole thing dry and then we're gonna add on our patterns and our leaves to complete the piece. All right, we're back and our barn owl is completely dry. And you can see this one is significantly darker shades of gray than this one. I left this one much lighter, um, but that's okay. They both translate as a barn owl. All right. So step two is going to be creating this lovely pattern. It's one of the things I love about so many versions or so many um, pieces of folk art that really catches my eye often are simple yet repeating patterns, um, especially in foliage and leaves. So these again are inspired by that. This fern pattern I see a lot in Scandinavian folk art. Um, I just love this kind of very simple leaf and berry pattern um, that you can create. And you don't have to stick to a perfect pattern. Don't beat yourself up over it if it's not perfect. So this, at least for me anyway, I like to use it as inspiration, but not an exact, I'm not trying to exactly replicate something. 
So loose and repeating pattern. So I've mixed together Payne's Gray and Thalo Blue. Let me see if I can get a swatch card here. I normally have like a hundred of them lying around. I can't get rid of them and now I can't find one. Okay, swatch card located. This is just the back of an old painting that I did not particularly care for. So it's a phthalo blue, Payne's gray combination. So here it is. And it's hard to see on camera, but here is our Payne's gray that we used. So they're very close. This one just has a slight tint of blue to it. Um, again, you could do the whole thing in just Payne's Gray and keep it completely monochromatic, um, but I just like the little variation in the colors. So I've added um, Thalo Blue to this color, and you can do more Thalo Blue if you want it to be more on the blue side. So I'm using my size 4 brush again, and I'm going to start with this side and just do these. So it's basically an open leaf. I'm going to paint in an open leaf. I'm going to paint it in with a very light version of the Payne's Gray Thalo Blue mixture to fill it in. And then at the very end, I'm going to add some pattern texture on it. And you could just keep yours open leaves. You could paint them all solid color leaves, whatever works for you. So you can see here in this other one that I painted, which is very different, but still... I used all closed leaf textures, but you can see this repeating kind of fern pattern here. Um, so whatever works for you, whatever you like. So I'm going to start down here. I'm going to draw my, so I say draw, but I'm going to sketch out with my paintbrush, kind of the leading line that I want for this. And then my skinny little some skinny little branches that come off of it. And then off of this, I'm going to put some open leaves. So a little stem and an open leaf. Oh, bless you, Gracie. That was my dog sneezing. A little stem and an open leaf. So I'm going to put an open leaf on the end of this one. And I'm just going to work my way up. And then I'm going to take my brush, just rinse it out in the water lightly so it still has some color on it. And I'm just going to fill these in with a lighter blue. So it's not completely solid. You can definitely tell there's an outline to it. My goal was not to make it all one solid thing. I want the outline to remain versus the interior. And then I'm going to let these dry and I'm going to add more um, patterning to them later. You could just leave them like this, but I'm going to add um, some patterned lines that are very stylized kind of leaf veins. All right, so you can continue with this, adding more and more leaves. Um, another branch maybe that kind of winds this way that isn't as long. And just has a few leaves on it. Or you could stop. I'm going to put one more right here. To fill in that space, and then I'm also going to add 
berries or yeah, I guess they would be berries, twigs, sticks. So filling those in. So now I'm gonna really load up my brush and I'm just going to add in this kind of winding branch with just these little dots on it. So they're dark, they're solid, they're a little, um, they're lighter because they're thinner, you know, there isn't a big leaf shape at the end, but they're more solid, so they're darker in color, so they tend to pop more. Again, I could just keep it down there. It is getting pretty busy up here, but I'm just going to keep going for demonstration's sake. And you can go right over your leaves. You just want your leaves to be dry. That one wasn't. So you can see this leaf right here wasn't completely dry. I'm just going to blend this out. And then when it's all dry, I can go back and put a little berry on there later. So that's one side. And now on the other side, I'm going to use this fern kind of pattern. This little stylized fern. So I'm going to kind of come from the center or just off center a little bit. And just up this way around the shoulder. I'm going to give it a cap leaf. So the very top. Um, in a lot of Scandinavian folk art, I noticed there's like a flower on the top of the fern um, pattern. I don't know if that's a tulip or some other flower, just a stylized flower. All right, so we're going to have, it's going to be slightly skinnier at the base and wider at the top, and I'm going to repeat it parallel to each other on both sides. I'm not gonna be like super, super finicky about getting the exact parallel shape on either side. I am freehanding this, but I want them to be parallel and I want them to be approximately wider at the end, skinnier at where it meets the stem and about the same length. And you can see my shape naturally is painted on different on both sides, but they're close enough. Make a little bit more of this color. And this leaf pattern is going to kind of widen and then narrow again. So just keeping that in mind as you go. So these are gonna be a little bit longer, a little bit longer, and then they're gonna to start to narrow again. And we start to narrow. And you can see they're just solid. It's a solid wash. I am brushing a little bit to get through this for y'all. There we go. And there we go. We have our leaf or our fern kind of fern leaf pattern on the other side. And we have completed. 
excuse me, we have completed our barn owl with this nice patterning. Oh, I did mention I was gonna go back in to these leaves. So they're dry now. So I'm gonna come back in and make these just little stylized veins. So obviously a leaf doesn't really look like that, um, but the patterning is very traditional for sorry I keep pausing <laughs> I'm concentrating very very traditional for pattern making in folk art pieces that I've seen so you could do this on just a few of the leaves you could do it on all of them I'm gonna do it on all of them, I think. And they look very dark right now, but as they dry, they will lighten as well and they'll be a little bit less obvious, but as we paint them. So you need a good brush with a good tip on it. These are, I'm using Princeton Select. I use these with my students. I find these to be a really great student brush. I even paint with them sometimes if it's what I have at hand. I do like Princeton Velvet Touch as well. There's a lot of different brushes out there and honestly just find one that you really like. I've even started with and I had it in my palette or it was just on my table I don't even know where it came from earlier today but I started with these brushes that are like definitely cheap brushes you can get a whole pack of them for like ten dollars like the amount I pay for like one Princeton brush you can get a pack of these in like every size from two to twelve um so they don't last long but I really like them for details. When I first started watercolor, I wish I could find it. I definitely just threw it back in here. It's the Nick Pro, here it is. These Nick Pro brushes, this is a size four, but they're much stiffer head. Um, they don't hold as much water as some of the other brushes, so you have to refill often, but I love them for fine detail. And I was using it, I actually painted, I think a bunch of this with this brush when I was doing the, um, creating the sample piece. And they, you know, they do the job for a beginner. If you, if you really can only spend a couple dollars on brushes, um, these are, are good. They will have to be replaced. Mine started the, um, feral started coming loose after like six months, not even. Um, so just keep that in mind, but to get started, they're great. So this is our owl painting. I love it. This is our barn owl. They are similar, but very different. This one's a little darker. Thank you so much for painting with me today. I really enjoy uh, bringing you these new styles that I'm exploring myself, and I hope they are useful to you in exploring your watercolor journey. Um, I'm Shana Searcy. Don't forget to check the description for the supplies we used. Follow me on social media, on Instagram. Um, you can find me under Shana Searcy as well as the Umbrella Arts Academy and check out my studio crew classroom in the Umbrella Arts Academy. Thanks everybody. Have a great day and happy painting.